Yeah. Is consciousness necessary for the internalization of this full gamut of pain? Yes. You this believe is, it is? I believe firmly it is. And, you know, I'm a recovering anesthesiologist. And when you were, you know, operating on a patient, um, the patient is unconscious. They are not experiencing pain. You need a conscious brain for the experience of pain. Now, what people incorrectly made the leap of is thinking, well, they're not experiencing pain, so everything's okay. That would be a logical fallacy because all those signals are still coming from the body, mm -hmm. still hitting the spinal cord and having their impact there. All those injury signals, because let's face it, when you do surgery, it's really nothing more than a controlled injury. But all of the electrical impulses coming in from the body that are slamming into the spinal cord and the brain are open full bore. They're impinging on all those brain systems responsible for stress responses and So does that mean control. we are seeing a cortisol surge? We're seeing whatever one would expect a conscious person to experience with epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol, all these things still surging out yes. in response to pain. Yes, and in, in response to nociception. Independent of perception of pain. Right. And you notice that I'm trying to be precise in my language here mm -hmm. because since they're unconscious, there's no pain, but there's plenty of nociception. But it is no different than a controlled injury. Uh, it's done in a nice sterile environment, but it is a massive injury that people are undergoing. Yeah. So to answer your question and getting back to it, no, I don't believe there is the perception of pain without a conscious brain.